Welcome back to People Analytics. I'm your host, Lindsay Patton. Today, I have Mauricio with me, who is the co-founder of Decodes. Welcome, Mauricio. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you for the, for the invitation. And thank you for coming on the show. I'm really excited to dive in. But before we do that, can you give us a brief intro of who you are, what you do, and why you do yes. it? Well, uh, I'm uh, one of uh, three co-founders of a company named uh, Dakotes. Uh, I started Dakotes uh, on 2014 with uh, two of my friends of the u- university during our last year of uh, engineering. So in that year, uh, we were studying uh, engineering in, in, in a city called Merida in Yucatan, Mexico. And, uh, and everything about mobile apps was starting to, to make a lot of noise in here during that year. So it was uh, all this... Uh, boom of startups that were basically mobile apps. I, 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 I think that during that year, uh, Twitter or Instagram, one of those was just acquired or was being acquired by, by Facebook. And then WhatsApp was worth like billion of, billions of dollars. So, so the media was yeah. starting to make a lot of stories about this type of projects and, and startups and business models. and. Uh, and that made a lot of sense to us because we were studying engineering and our final project for the engineering uh, career was uh, uh, for the engineering degree was to do uh, two mobile apps uh, for iOS, the, the platform for, for Apple mobile devices, right? And uh, so we did the mobile apps and we started learning to do mobile apps and people started to ask asked us for for developments of mobile apps because everyone wanted the the mobile app for their business for their small business and uh and we started the company we started the the company building uh mobile apps for uh third party clients for 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 small business like uh one of the first mobile apps we did i remember was for a cookie a famous cookie brand cookie store in in the in the city a local uh, cookie store and uh, I remember that we copied a lot the design the UI UX design of the mobile app of uh, of a, a brand of pretzels from the US which is a, a very famous pretzels uh, brand I think it was called uh, Anis or some st- something like Anis pretzels or something like that and uh, they had during that year they had an, an, an awesome UI UX design so we got a lot of the ideas for this mobile app from 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 that uh, pretzels brand, and then uh, we started growing. We started having more clients. We started hiring people. We uh, we have been growing the company uh, by uh, what what you call the bootstrapping. Bootstrapping. We haven't had any investment, any outside investors. Uh, aside from uh, my two partners and I, so uh, now we are uh, around 200 uh, decoders all around uh, Latin America. So we are uh, located in. Uh, the last time I checked, we were in 115 uh, cities of Latin America. Uh, mainly in Mexico, we are still uh, the majority of the of the people is in Mexico still, but. Uh, but we have uh, the coders in Argentina, in Colombia, in Guatemala, in Peru, uh, in Mexico. Uh, we are working fully remote, so that uh, that is a great advantage. So we can have talent all over Latin America, even in Europe. I think I, I think right now we have one one decoder, one software engineer located in Spain. Uh, so yeah, yeah, uh, working remotely and working. Uh, online uh you can think more global and you can uh open or or yes you can open your 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 limits or or grow your you expand your limits to to the whole world right so that's what we are doing yeah Absolutely. And that really transitions into, you know, the big topic that we're gonna talk about uh today and that is 
you know, the the culture experience that you went through because of COVID. Um, so when we initially spoke, um, you know, I learned that you had a very heavy office culture. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about what that culture was like before COVID? Yes, yes. Before COVID, uh, we, we grew the company uh, to maybe 50, 50 decoders, 50 employees. Um, we were all going to a physical office space located in Merida, Mexico. Uh, for, 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 your audi- for your audience, uh, Merida is located uh, in the Yucatan Peninsula, which is where uh, all the, the Mayan uh, ruins are located, and uh, it's uh, where Cancun and, and, and Tulum, which sounds a lot right now, uh, is located. So, so we are like four hours from Tulum and, and, and Cancun. That's where Merida is. So we had an office space in, in, in Merida and we were around uh, 50 guys uh, just before COVID hit. So we were 50 people going to the, to, uh, to the office to work. Um, most of the clients we met, uh, we have uh, meetings in, in, in the office to, to understand the project, to understand their needs. Uh, a lot of meetings uh, before starting a project uh physical meetings in the office also um uh, all the meetings with the teammates uh were in the office all the interviews to hire new guys were also in the office and we were limited to hiring people that were uh living in in, in Merida or or in towns near Merida in maybe in towns in in, in Yucatan which is the state or uh towns uh of of states near Merida right a lot of a lot of the coders were making uh, maybe two hours from from their town from from their house to to the to the office every day, and uh, and that was before COVID before COVID hit. Um, I remember that uh, hours one way, right? Yeah, sorry. That's two hours one way, right? Two hours one way, yes, yes, yes. Because they, they need to take a bus oh my God. from their yeah wow. from their small town to the to the city. And um so yeah, that, that changed uh when COVID came because when, when COVID came I remember uh I had to, to send a, a letter to, to to the company on the March eighteenth. Uh, telling everyone that because of, of the COVID, uh, COVID pandemic, uh, we needed to move to, to, to home office, to a home office, uh, uh, work. And, uh, it was, uh, it, for us, it wasn't that hard, uh, if we compare it to other companies, because we, we are a software development company. So all of the work we do is in, in on, on computers, right? Um, we just had to, to learn a little bit more to use, uh, zoom calls to have, a, a good connect internet connection to, uh, be, pre- be prepared for a zoom call and don't waste, uh, other people time and stuff like that. But, uh, it was relatively easy to, to make the, the switch. And also, as I was telling you, the, 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 the time we talk, we before COVID, we were doing something we called uh, uh, Home Office Wednesdays. So that was like uh, one year before COVID came. So, so we did this uh, Home Office Wednesdays because we wanted to give people this benefit of working from home and do their stuff they, they needed to do on their, on their homes, do it on Wednesdays. And... Uh, and that also helped because we already knew and the, the software engineers already knew how to work and how to collaborate uh, everyone being on, on their houses, right? And uh, yeah. so, yeah, and, 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 and moving uh, to a remote environment helped us to, uh, to grow, to open our, our boundaries and start hiring people uh, all over Mexico and all over Latin America. So... That's great. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. One thing I love about your story is that, you know, you had you had that strong culture in the office. Um, I, you mentioned when we uh, met previously that you would bring clients in. It was very, uh, there's a lot of camaraderie and, uh, you know, like talking, friendship. Um, but now, you know, you, you couldn't do that anymore with COVID. Um, and what I really appreciate was just how open-minded um, you were throughout this huge transition that really just upended your culture. Um, so can you talk a little bit about going into remote work with an open mind and, you know, being a leader and helping, you know, the um, your staff really, you know, go toward this with a, a positive mindset? Yes. Well, it was done uh, a lot thanks to the head of HR that we had, uh, that's, it, it, she's still our head of HR, which is, uh, uh, her name is Pia. And, uh, she helped a lot to make the, all the changes to start, uh, using uh, an HR platform because when we were in an office and we were only 50, 50 decoders, we didn't, uh, had to use, uh, an HR platform during that time. Right. But, but when we, went everyone to work uh, from home. And when we started hiring a lot of, of, of people remotely and doing the onboarding processes uh, or, uh, remotely, right? Um, we, 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 we started looking for an HR platform. Uh, our head of, of people uh, started uh, using HR platforms, started using the, the tools, making all the switches, making all the onboarding process, like um, making the, adjust the adjustments needed for the onboarding process to work on a virtual environment because we were no longer on a physical office. Um, obviously, a lot of things uh, change. Like we lose a lot of stuff working remotely. Like we cannot do um, yeah. like this uh on-person events. We, we did a lot of on-person events. Like uh, when we were in an office, we did, uh, we celebrated everyone's, uh, each month we celebrated uh, the birthdays of all the people that had oh, wow. a birthday during that month, during, uh, with a, a buffet, with, with a, uh, how do you say, with an event on the, on the office during uh, the last Friday of, of the month. So we had, a, we had food, we have uh, music, we had uh, like a festival. And, uh, you can, you, we, so you, you, you can, you cannot do that anymore during, uh, working remotely with, uh, 200, yeah. 200, uh, other people in all over Latin America. But, uh, but, uh, we started innovating and we started doing, uh, virtual events. We started experimenting, uh, uh, bringing, uh, experts from outside the company to give, uh, meetups, to give talks, to give, uh, presentations. Uh, we started doing uh, uh, a fitness challenge for the company uh, remotely. So we started exploring a lot of activities, virtual activities, to engage the people and to the the, the coders that were working with us be before COVID, before like when we were working in an office, already had the the codes culture on their on their on their mind, on their heart. The challenge was to put that same culture on the new people that we were onboarding uh, virtually, uh, uh, people that that never yeah. uh, met the or knew the the, the office space, that never uh, uh, worked in person with everyone. So that was a challenge, and I think we, after uh, two years, we 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 did it. We did it great. We did it okay. Uh, I'm not saying that. Everyone is uh, fit to work from home. <laughs> we have we have had cases like uh, some people get distracted, some people cannot uh, work with with, with with strong deadlines working from home. Uh, but a lot of people are uh, it's great. A lot of people is more productive working from home. So so we just need to 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 make a system to have uh, fast evaluations of this uh, of the productivity of the attitude of the people of 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 their their ways of working from home and and to keep the ones that are great 
and the ones that aren't, uh, they can work work in a physical office in in other in other company, right? But uh, so yeah, it's 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 a challenge. It's 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 a change. You 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 lose some things, but you win some new things if you if you know if you are open to do the the switch. Yeah, and one thing that uh, really struck out to me was the amount of time it took to hire um, and how that was cut down when you went virtual. Yes, yes. Well, like your your audience must know that if you uh, have a recruitment process that is in a physical office, like the traditional recruitment process, um, you need to go to an interview to the physical office, maybe to the headquarters mm -hmm. of the company. I have not one interview, but have five interviews with different uh, people. Maybe the first one is with the HR uh, department or, or with the recruiter, then with the, with the manager, then with another manager and, and maybe with the CEO. And um, the traditional ways to do that uh, on, in, in person, right? Uh, in, in a physical office, in a physical space. And uh, we were doing on pers in person uh, interviews, so we were spending maybe uh, two hours from the time that uh, the candidate came to the office or got to the office, and then make the coffee, right, and make the put the, the desk uh, beautiful yeah. and make everything perfect for the for the interview. And then have some chatting, have some gossip before the, the the formal interview. Then do the interview. Then yeah, it was. I think in average, you 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 have uh, between one and two hours for 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 candidate. And uh, when you do virtual interviews or remote uh, hiring, uh, you can do interviews. You can do the first screening of uh, maybe twenty five minutes, right? And also you can, you can see that if the, during the first 10 minutes, the candidate is not what you were looking for, you can go a little bit faster. You can tell the candidate that he's lacking some of the skills that you need or some of the experience that you need, and you can end the interview uh, quickly. If, when you, in, in person, you cannot do that, right? So, so I mean, still the, like, very senior positions um, or maybe positions that will work directly with uh, the CEOs of the company or the, the, the C-levels, uh, you, you, you will do that interviews uh, or, or you will at least have one interview in, in, in person, right? Because you want to meet the, the guy in person, the candidate in person. But a lot of the junior positions or a, a lot of uh, the positions that that will have that already have like a very um, specific task to do or a very specific project to work on, um, you can you can do all the all the interviews and, and really good uh, filters uh, remotely. So. So, yeah, that that, that was a great a great uh, en enhancement that we had during the change. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the cultural benefits of going remote. Um, you know, you talked about the international um, staff that, that Decodes is, uh, has hired over the past couple of years. So what have been those cultural benefits of working with people from different countries and even from different states in Mexico? Yes. So... Also, that's one of the things that we that you gain when you do the change from being on a on an office space to a virtual environment is that um, you are not restricted to people on your location or near lo your location, and uh, you open up to the diversity. You open up to the to to the inclusion uh, policies, and uh, you. Because you can hire people, uh, like like I was saying, we, we started hiring first people from different cities inside Mexico. And then my partners and I, 
said, hey, why why do we need to hire from from Mexico? We can even hire people from outside Mexico. And uh, we started hiring people from, from Argentina because you have a lot of, a, a, a great pool of talent of, of software engineers over there in Argentina. Uh, we started hiring people in Argentina and uh, it worked great. And then we expanded to uh, Colombia, uh, Chile, and, and yeah, it, 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 it didn't matter. Right now, it doesn't matter where the, the people is working from as long as they are uh, being uh, productive, as long as they are being, uh, they, they have a good attitude, they are answering, they are doing their job, and uh, they are engaged. That's, that's great. Like, Everyone can work from from the beach if they want, but uh, they 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 just need to to complete their tasks and to be uh, engaged with the company and with the with the culture, right? Nice. That's what it's all uh, about <laughs> having yeah, that balance. Some of the things you gain is that uh, is like uh, is like a bowl of fruits. Like before before doing that, you have like uh, it's like having a bowl of only apples. Right, but then when you mm. open up to different cultures, to different countries, uh, even to different cities inside Mexico, people is very different. So, so when we open up to different uh, talent from different countries, you start getting like a bowl of fruits with not only with apples but with uh, bananas and with uh, maybe a watermelon over there, maybe oranges, right? So, so you start getting this diversity, this mix that it's great for the company. Uh, people, software engineers mainly, uh, they 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 like to meet new people from other countries to see what they talk about, what they what they eat. Like uh, people that are in in Argentina, uh, drink. They have a very famous drink over there, which is like a. a Matcha, matcha. Its name it's matcha. I, I I don't remember, but it's like their their green tea that they drink almost every day. It's very famous over there. So so you start learning all the different stuff that people do, and uh, you start meeting people from from all around the world. And even one day, if you go to travel to to Colombia, to Argentina, or to other city in Mexico, you already ha- will have a friend over there that you can meet. So. So that's, that's, that's great. Yeah. And that's such a great point too, is especially if I, as I've been traveling more is that I have, I know more people all around the country, all around the world. Um, and so it's really nice to, to have that. Yes. Yes. Di- the diversity of thought and of, uh, of way of living, it's important to, to have innovation and to have uh, different per- perspectives to 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 solve a problem so so yeah i think it is it is it is a fact right now it's uh, there have been a lot of studies that that uh tell 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 us this that diversity is really important for innovation to happen so yeah Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk a little bit about navigating digital tools because, um, you know, you talked briefly about getting a new HR platform and really diving into di- using digital tools um, when you had to go remote. So uh, can you share a little bit how being a software company really put you in a good position to launch into a digital uh, world? Yeah, yeah, we were... Uh... We were working uh, because we were doing uh, all the work from computers, software development projects. Um, we were building uh, platforms, not only mobile platforms, but uh, web platforms, uh, all, almost all kinds of software for, for startups and, and big companies. Um, all the work we did was uh, via, uh, uh, we, we used uh, platforms like Slack, like uh, for software uh, development, we use uh, a very famous tool called uh, Jira, which is uh, for the project manager to follow up the the tasks and the and the bugs and the timelines and stuff like that. So so we already 
were uh, used to work with uh, with this type of tools. That helped a lot, a lot for the to 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 make the move to work remotely. And uh, what we needed to, what we were lacking is what that, that I told you, right? Like we for for the HR part and for the marketing uh, part, we were still doing a lot of stuff in the in the in the comp in the office in the physical office so so that's where we needed to apply more change right to the to this uh hr and marketing activities because we no longer had the, a physical office a physical space to to put the brand to put the identity of the company over there to to put maybe i don't know uh uh signs of uh or or quotes right and and stuff yeah. like that for hr and marketing we no longer have the physical space the physical office so that's what we needed to 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 learn to to start using to start to to, to start exploring how to how to move all these physical uh activities and physical identity of the codes uh to to the internet right to to online format and uh and yeah i, th I think we, we 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 did it we did it okay uh there are still a lot of new things that we can do uh but uh, i i mean even we we started a podcast two years ago also because we noticed that uh, uh podcasts were great to uh to transmit the, the 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 company culture to to the employees, so um, so we started a, a company podcast, and uh, yeah, we started exploring, we started innovate innovating, and uh, it's uh, it's great, it's great. I think it, it's not uh, some. I I've been talking with some software companies. They do at least one event with the whole company uh every year uh they meet like the whole company flies to one city and they do a big event over there maybe that's important maybe we, we still are not doing that uh uh we have been done we have been doing some events with each department so we bring to merida to yucatan the heads of each department or maybe the the project management department, maybe the uh, HR department, we bring it to Merida. Uh, but I think it, it it is important. You can you can build a good hybrid uh, environment by uh, working remotely, but doing some maybe every two months, every three months, doing events in person because it is still important for for people to to meet. In, in, in a physical environment to meet in person to to see the faces in 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 a in, in, in yeah. a real place yeah definitely and you know talking about digital tools i know that you've been exploring artificial intelligence um and how to incorporate that into hr practices can you uh, go on a little bit about that yes well uh this is happening just now, as we are, as we as we talk uh, every day, uh, I am following right now like five or seven different new newsletters of AI specifically, and uh, and every day we get like ten big announcements or or big discoveries on AI. So yeah, uh, what is happening is that uh, the 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 new stuff. So to understand this, AI, AI and machine learning has been for a long time right now on, on, on the world. There tools with, with machine learning and with AI have existed for maybe more than five years now. But the new things, the new stuff that is coming now that is changing everything is the generative AI, right? So is this, this type of yeah. tools like ChatGPT that is, that can generate content that can generate text that can generate video images uh voice uh and also can do it backwards can can understand 
all these formats almost like a human being so so this is changing everything because um because a lot of activities maybe uh 30 i think it was ibm who said that uh, all the back office positions uh that were open they they just freeze they just uh froze those positions this week because they will uh do it with ai so so a lot of the uh, a lot of the uh activities that involve uh maybe i don't know accountants a lot of content uh for mar- ma- marketing positions that were just doing some content those will be disrupted um on yeah. the hr part the maybe the 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 things that won't change or that still need to be done on person is maybe one on one meetings right maybe feedback in person maybe uh, mm-hmm. when i say in person i i say i mean it's, uh, it you you cannot use an ai tool to give feedback to 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 a teammate right uh, i mean you can you can do it but still the the, the teammates need the peer to peer feedback coming from from another human being so those yeah. things maybe won't change right now so we need to focus on doing more the the the, the stuff that won't change and the stuff that can already be done with generative ai and with all, all these tools that are coming we need to do it with ai like recruitment is one of the hr um, activities that will be change that will change a lot because you can do almost all, all almost all the tasks of the process uh, if you do a flow diagram of a recruitment process uh, almost i think 90% of the recruitment process can be done with generative ai so um, so that will change a lot and um, yeah so but but that's i mean we are just exploring we are like in the face of exploring and learning and being aware of what everything that is happening because yeah. every month something big comes up new and it changes everything i i think i got an error can you hear still? yeah okay mm-hmm. so what is happening we're in the face of learning and being aware of everything that is happening because uh every month something new comes out and it makes yeah. a lot of the stuff what that what's made the month before uh becomes obsolete becomes useless yeah. so i mean microsoft and google already announced their uh a generative ai integration on the microsoft on their office office tools and google, mm-hmm. and google workspace Wow. So that will also change a lot. That will that will kill a lot of uh, AI tools and AI platforms that uh, entrepreneurs are building right now, <laughs> because you will have all your data on your Google Drive, and uh, right. having generative AI on your Google Drive, you can just tell the Google AI uh, bot, "Hey, uh, give me the report of I don't know something." with all these documents I have in here, or give me the, I've been exploring a, a tool. This, you will like this one for the podcast, which is, um, you can, ju- you just upload the MP3 file or the MP4 uh, file to the program. Mm-hmm. And it gives you, uh, instant, instant, instantly it gives you the transcript. Okay. It, it selects, it, it knows which speaker is who who is who and so it it segments the wow. transcript by speaker and then you can you you just push a button that says uh uh ai generate ai and it generates like 20 blocks of of content from the options for the podcast uh name or podcast title for the for this episode to the wow. description or the summary of the of the episode to the bio of the of the of the speaker to the time the timestamps of the of the podcast with all the all the topics that were talked during the timestamp uh, questions and answers that were 
talk during the episode. So, so it is, it is, it is, it is crazy what what is happening. And uh, I think in in the next three months we we will have a lot of good good tools, good good news for this. Yeah, it's going to be a very interesting future. That's for sure. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, Mauricio, this is yeah. been oh, this has been such a great conversation. Um, thank you so much for joining me and discussing. You know the transformation Decodes has gone through. Um, before we uh, depart, is there anything that you think I missed or would like to add? No, I think we 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 talked about everything. Um, I would emphasize on the on being aware of what is happening with this uh, generative AI uh, tools and advancements, because we need to be careful to not be working on new pro or not not being starting new projects right now that will be that will become obsolete in two or three months because. Uh, ChatGPT five can do some new tricks. So, so, so I think AI, generative AI, will change a lot. And on the HR space, it's is one of the the is 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 one of the spaces that will be more impacted with generative AI. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, what's the best way that someone can learn about you or decodes? Okay, on the our our website is uh, dacodes.com. Uh, we are in all social media with uh, as dacodes. We have uh, LinkedIn. Uh, we have uh, Facebook. We have uh, Instagram. Uh, our website is in 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 English, and uh, and you can also find me on on LinkedIn with my name, and my email is Mauricio. Dot, uh, dot moreno which is my last name my, la my last name uh, at dacodes.com so lots of good places to find you well if you or anyone else is like mauricio and wants to create a strong culture email me lindsay at staffgeek.com thank you for listening thank you for listening to staff geeks people analytics podcast I'm your host, Lindsay Patton, and I'm always looking to interview leaders who put people first. If you or someone you know lead with a people-first mindset, please email me at lindsay at staffgeek.com. That's L-I-N-D-S-A-Y at staffgeek.com. If you want to take things a step deeper and understand your organization's true culture DNA, I encourage you to take Staff Geek's free culture assessment. Just head to staffgeek.com and click the button that says free culture assessment. Thanks again for listening.